morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. We'd like to say good morning and welcome you this morning to the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church here in Amory, Mississippi, 501 108 Street, on the corner of E Avenue. Truly, it is a blessing to be in the Lord's service on the Lord's day. And more importantly, we are here this morning. We are on the Lord's time. We're standing here this morning, and we know this morning, this month, is Lupus Awareness Month. That's why I have on my purple and gray today, support of Lupus Awareness Month. And we have several members here at the St. Paul Mission Baptist Church that are dealing with this. And if you do not know what lupus is, we encourage you to take time out and see what it is, what type of disease that it is. And at this time, Reverend Connors, he's going to come this morning with our scripture and our prayer and then we will come back later and we will have a small presentation uh, concerning lupus. This morning our scripture reading will come from Psalms chapter 47, Psalms 47 verses 5 through 7 and it reads, God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with understanding. I read to you Psalms chapter 47, verses 5 through 7. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly fathers, we stand before you now. Father God, we just give you praise and thanks, O God, for your mercy and for your grace. Heavenly Father, we praise you, O Heavenly Father, for you are sitting on your throne, O God. And Father God, we just thank you, God, for how you continue to bless and watch over us. Father God, we pray this day, God, you give us forgiveness, Father, for our sins. Heavenly Father, we ask, O Heavenly Father, that you continue to lead God and direct us according to your will. God, look over this community. Look over our nation, O Heavenly Father. And Father God, those that have been affected by the COVID-19, O Heavenly Father, we just pray, O God, you continue to be with them. Keep them lifted up before you, God, and just... Be with them, O oh, Heavenly Father, for those that are recovering, O oh, Heavenly Father, and those that have been diagnosed sick. Father God, we just ask, O oh, Heavenly Father, that you just make a way on their behalf, O oh, Heavenly Father. God, we know that you're a God that is able. We know that you're a God that is willing. Father God, we just give you praise and thanks now, Father, for what you're going to work and do in their lives. God, we thank you for what you're doing in our communities. We thank you for what you're doing in our ministry, Father. And Father God, we just ask, God, you continually be with our pastors, be with our spiritual leaders, God, be with our national leaders. God, continually give them the wisdom and guidance, God, that they need. And Father God, we just ask, so, and Father, you just continue to work in our lives. And God, be with everyone here this day. And Father, for our sick and shedding, God, we just ask you give them comfort. For those that have lost their loved ones this past week, we ask that you just give them solace, give them comfort in their grief, Father. And Father God, we thank you for it now. We ask this be done in your precious Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time now, we're going to have a presentation uh, concerning lupus at this time. We're going to show a short presentation.
Amen. And truly we thank God again this morning. And we thank God for those who um, pray, continue to pray for those that are dealing with lupus. And many times I've discovered there are many of us that may not have an uh, idea of what lupus is. Um, but one of the things we need to understand about lupus is that it's not contagious. It's not contagious. Uh, you cannot catch lupus to someone or give lupus to someone. It's not related to HIV, which is a human immune deficiency virus. Uh, in HIV or AIDS, the immune system is underactive, but in lupus, the immune system is overactive. And so many times we have a misconception about things because we do not read or we do not talk to people that are dealing with this disease, but lupus is an autoimmune disease. In some ways, lupus represents a kind of allergic reaction by the body in which the immune system sees the body's own healthy tissues and cells as foreign. In other words, your own body don't recognize your own tissue and your own cells. So we need to be mindful of these things. We need to educate ourselves and look at who it is attacking and make sure we are doing all we can to make sure we know all about it. And I just again want to commend those. As I say, we have several members here that are dealing with it. I have one member that is in college, and I really am proud of her, Sister Alexis Harris, who is doing a wonderful job in college and did not allow uh, this disease to defeat her. And I just want to let her know I love her, and we just thank God for her. Amen. This morning, again, we are blessed to be here this morning at the St. Paul uh, Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, truly, uh, it's another day's journey. Amen. And I'm glad about this journey this morning. Amen. And I just counted a blessing to be in God's service. And I'm just excited about what God is doing during this season. The Bible says, in all things, give thanks. And even in times like these, I'm still giving God thanks. Amen. My sermon this morning is a title, Never Would Have Made It uh, Without You. That's our sermon title this morning. I don't really sing that song, but I'm going to uh, attempt to. <coughs> Amen. I don't sing it, but I'm going to attempt to this morning. It, it only still feels sitting, and I know my musician, he can catch me. <coughs> wherever I am this morning.
Lamentations. We say lamentation. Many people might be saying, is that in the Bible? Yes, it is. Lamentations. Chapter number three is where we will argue this text from this morning. Lamentations chapter three, uh, verse number 17 through verse number 23. I've already told you the subject this morning, never would have made it without you. Lamentations chapter three, verse 17 says, and thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. I forgot prosperity and I said my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Remembering my affliction and my misery the wormwood and the guile. My soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is Thy faithfulness. Amen. The New Century Version reads like this. Let me read it right quick. He says, I have no more peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. I said, my strength is gone. I have no hope in the Lord. Lord, remember my suffering and misery, my sorrow and trouble. Please remember me and think about me. But I have hope when I think of this. What do you think of? The Lord love never end. His mercy never stops. They are new every morning. Lord, your loyalty is great. And from that subject, from the scriptures this morning, I want to talk about I never would have made it without you. Never would have made it 
without you. The psalmist says, in essence, I, I have no more peace. In other words, I've been down and dealing with what I'm dealing with for so long. I, I don't even have an idea uh, what happiness is anymore. Thank you. He said, my strength is gone. And then he said, I have no hope. In the Lord, never would have made it without you. Never would have made it. I never, never would have made it without you. My brothers and sisters, in 2007, there was a very popular song that was crisscrossing across our nation. This song was written by Pastor Marvin Sapp. The song was entitled, I Never Would Have Made It Without You. And this song captivated many people, causing many folk to shout, many folk to shed tears and emotions and just reflecting at the mention of the lyrics. The song says, I never would have made it. Never could have made it without you. The song says I would have lost it all, but now I see you were there for me. The song says I'm stronger, I'm wiser, I'm better, but not just better, I'm so much better. But yes, this moving melody and these life-affirming lyrics are not centered upon one's ability, not upon one degrees, not upon one achievement. But in the text, it signals that there is a survival to our existence that is not predicated upon our personal abilities, but it is deeply rooted and created by and called into existence and influenced by and produced by and modeled by and encouraged by and even authored by the Lord himself. Well, maybe this morning I'm preaching to the wrong people this morning, but, but most of us in here and most of you out there, you do know if it were not for the Lord on your side. The, the psalmist says that, that we wouldn't even be here right now. Uh, the psalmist says that if it were not for the Lord's mercies and his grace, that we would not be present here today. If, if it wasn't for the Lord being on our side, we could be gathering today for a funeral instead of for worship. If it were not for the Lord on our side, we could be laying in a hospital room. We could be receiving an offering for the morticians while they're prepping your body. We could be telling God to bless your family because they are preparing for your home service. If it had not been for the Lord. But yes, there is an element of survival that exists even today as we face this opening, this we face this coronavirus that has us been all over the place. Because of, in spite of some of the things that we are dealing with right now, there are some of us can shout right now and say, Pastor, I've been through some things, but yes, I still survived. In other words, you did not have the best life insurance, but still you survived. You, you may have had to spend a night in the hospital, but you still survived. The food you ate might have poisoned you, but you still survived. You might have to sign up for welfare, but you still survived. Sometimes you had to run through the storm. Sometimes you found yourself even in the rain, but you still survived. That cancer didn't kill you. Those friends didn't discourage you because you can say here today we still survive and the reason why we can say that we survive is because God has been good God is good and God will still be good because even in the bad times, even in the good times, even in the crying times, even in the happy times, even in the bereaved times, even in the birthday times, even in the classified times, even in the headline times, God is still good. And so this brings me to our text in the book of Lamentations. And admittedly, this morning, some of you may be still searching because we don't hear a whole lot of preaching from this book in the Bible. Because 
It's not widely preached from, and it's not widely taught from. This book, believed to be written by the hands of the prophet Jeremiah. This book is not a, a happy, a happy book, but rather it's a book of introspection, a book of sorrow, a book of reflection, a book of remorse, a book of regret, a book of personal pain and terrible trauma of suffering. It's, it's a collection of laments by Jeremiah. And throughout this chapter, Jeremiah, he had laid down on the proverbial couch of therapy. He, he laid his heart open after a particular traumatic period in his life. And, and this ought to help somebody this morning because no matter how holy you think you are, priest reverend, no, no matter how high you think you are up in church, every now and then a traumatic period can come visit you. How y'all gonna help me here? In other words, you can be Reverend Doctor and a traumatic period will vivid your study. You can be Bishop or Elder and a traumatic period will vivid you while you're slipping on your vestment. You can be Brother Deacon and a traumatic period can vivid you while you're waiting at your house. You can be Sister Mother and a traumatic period can stop by your house and vivid you for a while. And so this painful period has, has caused Jeremiah to see, to speak, and to think. Now, 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 now look here at the simplicity of this outline, but, but I want to look at it for a minute. The first thing Jeremiah says is, Jeremiah begins to see. He begins to see. It's in the text right here. Because notice here, Jeremiah opens up this part of this Pericope by saying, look at where I am, not just now. He says, but look at me where I am right now in my life. No, no, in other words, he, he draws a, a parallel position of himself and the remnant of Israel. But he relates his pain profoundly because in verses 1 through 18 he gives us a laundry list of what he sees he says look here Reverend Connor he says when I look at myself I have no more peace it's in the text right there in Hebrew it draws a very interesting picture because not only does he say, I don't have peace? But it also draws a picture that God has forcibly removed me from my peaceful position. Preach right, Mabry. In other words, I didn't lose this peace on my own. But because God wanted to do something in my life, God came alone and he forcibly removed me from my peaceful position. And in one instance, a voice his move, and it looked like he picking up some foul language, and Jeremiah got mad because God had removed him from where he was. And as I look now at this pandemic, as I look now at this COVID-19, it looks to me, Reverend Connors, that God has came along and God has removed some of us forcibly from our peaceful position. Jeremiah said, Jeremiah said, I have been separated from my peace. Now, now let me just pause parenthetically and tell you of all the things to be removed from, I don't ever want to be taken from peace. Peace real maybe. However, Jeremiah speaks as an Old Testament believer. I'm going to help some of y'all right here. But we are New Testament believers, we know that peace has a defining point. And we understand now, unlike Jeremiah, no matter what station of life we find ourselves in, we can still have peace. Y'all got to help me here. That, that's why when the storms of life come, 
we have a Jesus on our side, and all he got to do is say peace. That, that, that's why when doctors walk in and say, your x-ray don't look so good, we have a Jesus on our side, and all he had to do is say peace. That's why when trouble knock on the front door and go out the back door, we don't have to worry about nothing because we have a Jesus on our side, and all he have to do is say peace. Help me preach in here. Peace. There's a story of a lady that was going through. In January, she lost her mother. February, she lost her son. March, she lost her brother. April, she was diagnosed with hypertension. May, she lost her job. June, she lost her home. July, she was in an accident. August, her husband died. September, she found out she was ineligible for unemployment. In October, she was diagnosed with cancer. In November, she had a heart attack. And in December, she could have been guilty of doing what Jeremiah did. She could have, could have and, and, and forgot what happened as well. But, but the story said she kept on coming to church. The story said she kept on promising, prom praising God. The story said she kept on tithing. She kept on shouting. And one Sunday after church, somebody walked up to her and asked her, said, Miss Julia, why do you make so much noise? She said, baby, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and everything he done for me, she said, I cannot help myself. And some of us that are watching this by the eye, you are overdue for a praise. Are y'all going to help me here? Because you can shout right now out of everything that you've been through. You lost your job, had to file for unemployment, didn't have no food on the table. But some way, somehow, God made a way out of no way. And when you think of everything he done for you, you can't help but give God some praise. Jeremiah says, I have no... I don't have no peace. I don't forget what happened is is. I, but watch this right here. He does something strange, Digger McKenzie. He goes from seeing, and now Jeremiah begins to say. He goes from seeing. Now Jeremiah begins to say. Watch it right here. Watch it right here. Watch it right here. Jeremiah does not put this to paper initially. But what he does, he started uttering thoughts that are on his mind. In other words, he started talking to himself. All right. Priest, pastor. And sometimes in life, God will allow stuff to come your way. And God will Allow stuff to come my way. And, and if you're not careful, you'll find yourself talking to, your, to yourself. That's right. That's right. But watch what he said. Watch what he said. He said, he, look, look what he said. He said, he said, I have no hope in the Lord. But, but, but watch this here. Not, not only does Jeremiah say what's on his heart, but, but he articulates two meaningful maladies that have burdened him the most. Tell, tell him I said, if you really want to know what's troubling me, if you really want to know what got me pissed off, he said, my strength is gone. Whew. Tell, tell him I said, the reason why I look like I'm tripping, the reason why it look like I'm acting petty, because I used to have strength, but right now my strength is gone. And there are some of us right now, we're pissed off just like Jeremiah. I know I'm in church, but I can use that word, I believe, this morning. Because things are not going the way we thought they were going to go. You done listened to somebody that prophet, prophesied to you and told you God was going to do this in your life this year. And God was going to do that in your life this year. But never did they tell you that God was going to send a virus to shut down the whole nation. And now you feel like because it didn't work out the way you thought it was going to work out. Because 2020 was not the year. You're plenty. Now you are pissed off at God because now you are not weak anymore. You are not weak anymore. You are weaker. All right. All right. Hmm. And let me just help you do something right here. You don't have to be old to go through a major storm That's right. That's right. to have a testimony. I know I'm preaching here. That's right. That's right. There, there, there. There are some things in this life, hear me, child of God, that will zap you and will drain you 
of your strength. Preachers, we preach in the empty churches. That'll drain you of your strength. Preachers, we ain't baptizing nobody now. That will drain you of your strength. Can't shake the deacon's hand. Can't hug the mothers. Are y'all going to help me here? Can't hug the children every Sunday now. That will drain you. And sometimes the troubles of life will come along and they will take your strength. But I thank God for his word. What's his word, preacher? His word is that when I am weak, then he is strong. I'm preaching to somebody right now. Because, because you thought you were weak this year. You thought you were not going to make it. But God brought you through. Mm -mm -mm. That's how you made it past, past Ray Ray and Pookie. That's how you made it past bill collections and wage garnishment. That's how you made it past the doctor report and the x-ray. That's how you made it past you don't have new clothes. That's how you made it past family problem. Why? Because when you got weak, that's when God showed you how strong he was. May I turn color in the face because your blood pressure went up, your temper got high, your sugar shot up, your patience wore out, your switches went down. But guess what? God still took care of you because when your strength is gone, that's when he steps in. That's right. That's right. Watch this text here. Jeremiah, strength is gone. And when your strength is gone, you got to be careful. Why you say that? Because when your strength is gone, it starts messing with your spiritual side. Preach, Pastor. Because watch the text right here. Watch the text. Watch the text now. You got to be careful what you read. Jeremiah says in jointed speech, that means together. On one hand, my strength is gone. But on the other hand, I don't have no hope in the Lord. <laughs> That's what he said. In other words, my body is weak, but my spirit man is weak as well. Y'all don't see that in there. <laughs> see, what you got to understand is that, 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 is that while your physical body has, has been dealing with the effects of COVID-19, your spiritual side, preach Pastor Mabry, has been right there while you've been going through what you're going through. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Help, 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 help me, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm from the priest right here. I, I'm from the priest right here. Now, 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 it would be outstanding, Reverend Connors, if, if I could go to my closet and take out my spiritual side and put it on when I want to. Good God Almighty. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is that my spiritual side is not something we slap on before we go to church. <laughs> Which means everything I go through, my spiritual side is walking right there beside me. That's why Jesus said, when you have seen the Father, you have seen me. Because he understands that there is a spiritual side of me, preach for maybe, just as well as a physical side. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so Jeremiah said, he said, my spiritual side, he's affected. Hmm. And let me just help some of you out there that's going through right now. Don't go into another week. And talk like you can't feel anything spiritually. And act like even in the midst of this, you got it all together. Talk, preacher. Let's just tell the truth. Can we tell the truth? The spiritual man takes a hit just like the physical man when you're going through things in life. Hmm. The spiritual man is full of prayer. He's full of hope, he's full of truth, full of understanding, full of patience, full of love, and other lofty attributes. But the truth of the matter is that sometimes the spiritual side get tired. Yes. Yes. 
I'm preaching, I'm preaching, I'm preaching it here, I'm preaching it here. I listen, I know you super Christian, I know you got an S on your chest, and kryptonite don't bother you. But there are some of us that will be honest and say that there are some times that as well as our physical side, our spiritual side, get tired as well. Because Jeremiah begins to articulate so profoundly that I have no hope in the Lord, which means my spiritual side has got tired. He said, my hope has perished. That, that, that word, that word, that word, that word for perish in, in the Hebrew is abad. In the Hebrew, it means my, 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 my hope didn't just die, it was exterminated. Right. <laughs> exterminated. And, and you know how it is, Deacon, when you have a mouse in your house, you have to call an exterminator. And, and an exterminator had to come in from the outside of the house to bring stuff into the house in order to kill the mouse. And, and that's what discouragement and pain would do. Sometimes discouragement would come in your house. Sometimes pain would come in your house. But I'm sorry, I need to say it, Jeremiah. It will come into my house. It will come into your house. And it will try to kill your hope in the Lord. But watch what Jeremiah does. He goes from seeing and saying, then he starts praying. Start praying. You see, you see, that's the key of this passage. I think I forgot to give him this point. That's the key of this passage. It's prayer. How are you going to make it through COVID-19 prayer? How did you survive COVID-19 prayer? Prayer. 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 Communication. Talking to God. Preach, Reverend. But then you let God talk back to you. That's the key. How I made it this far? Prayer. How you still preaching, pastor, to an empty congregation? Prayer. Because yes, it messed with my mental side. Yes, I have to get mentally prepared every time I mount this pulpit. But how do I do it? Through prayer. Look what he said. Jeremiah said, look here. Look here, Reverend. He said, even though I don't have any more peace. And in spite of the fact that I've forgotten what happened is it, in spite of my strength being gone, in spite of it looked like I don't have no hope in the Lord, he said, I did something that didn't make sense given the weight of my circumstances. <laughs> Say that again, preacher. I like how you said it. Even though my strength is gone, even though in spite of the fact I have no hope in the Lord, Jeremiah said, I did something that didn't make sense given the weight of my circumstances. What you do, Jeremiah? I prayed. I prayed. I prayed. I prayed. Why? Because Jeremiah said maybe prayer works. Good God Almighty. Because see, prayer that's deeply rooted, communion between the God who hears and acts and the creation who talks and petition, prayer works. Say it again, preacher. Prayer that's deeply rooted Communion between the God who hears and acts and the creation who talks and petitions, prayer works. I got to get that. Look what Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, Jeremiah said, when I, when I, when I have my talk with God, good God of mine. He said, when I have my talk with God, he said, I asked God, <laughs> I only asked God for two things. I only, I only asked God. I only asked God for two things. Well, what you asking for, Jeremiah? He said, I asked him, listen, Reverend Carter, he said, I asked him to remember me and think about me. Yeah. Good God, I'm out of here. Yes, sir. Je Je Jeremiah said, all I asked God to do was remember me and think about me. Yeah. Now, how important it is to ask God to remember you. But, but Jeremiah says, not just my heart and my mind. It's in the text. Je Jeremiah said, I want you to remember my suffering. Remember my misery. Remember my sorrows. Now, I'm going to help some of y'all because you can't catch it right here, but you're going to get on the train in a minute. See, oftentimes, we want to brag to God about our goodness. 
We want to brag to God about our work and our deed. But Jeremiah said, I need you to pay attention to me because there are some things that are called my personal pain and they are encouraging me to give up. They are trying to make me give out. And in the midst of what we're going through, problem will cause you to think about quitting. Problem called many preachers to quit the church. Problem why problem called many choir stand to become empty. Many musicians don't play no more. Many teachers don't teach no more. Many deacons don't deacon no more. Why? Because problems have called them to quit. That's right. That's right. Jeremiah said, Lord, remember me and my troubles. But then he said, Lord, <laughs> just keep me on your mind. I go, <laughs> he said, he said, Lord, just <laughs> just keep me on your mind. Lord have mercy. You know, you know, you just good sometimes, Deacon, because you just know some folk are thinking about you. You know, sometimes every now and then you get an email. Every now and then you get a phone call. Every now and then you get a text man, hey, what you doing? That, that, that don't mean that, but you just know it feels good to know that you're on their mind. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I said, Lord, just keep me on your mind. Lord, I Lord, I gotta get out of here. Lord, just and they, and that's what I tell God every day, pal. When I'm going through what I'm going through, why? when I look at the church and I look at what's going on and wonder when we're going to be able to come back in here and worship again, wonder will things ever get back to normal, knowing that they will not get back to normal, looking when people are dying every day, more cases of coronavirus. I just say, Lord, keep me on your own. Man. Keep me on your mind. Keep me, keep me on your mind. That, that's all I want you to do, Lord. Keep me on your, on your mind. So Jeremiah, he goes from seeing to saying, from saying to praying. And I got to close, but now he goes from praying to praising. It's in here. Because Jeremiah said, maybe, you know, he said, I could have stopped right there. <laughs> Jeremiah said, I could have just, I could have just had my own pity party. Good God Almighty. But, but however, watch the text. After he prays, ha, he apparently has an encounter with God. <laughs> A meeting of the minds, if you will. And I'm just saying right now, somebody watching this live, you having trouble trying to decide what's your next move. But can I encourage you to have a little talk with God? Hmm. That's why throughout this pandemic, many preachers want to admit it. They want to act like they got it all together. But there were times my mind was confused. There were times my mind was troubled. My mind was spinning. But every time I talked to God, he gave me what the New Testament called a sound mind. He, he gave me clarity. Yes. Yes. Somebody out there, you worry about what's your next move. Preachers, you worry if they're going to ever come back to church. You worry if you're going to get paid next week. But I advise you to pray to God. And God will give you clarity. Yeah, yeah. Do I have a witness in here? Right. I say I want to encourage you to pray to God. Yeah. And God will give you clarity. Yeah. In other words, God will give you uh, some coherent, intelligible. And let you know that everything is going to be all right. All right. So Jeremiah says... Then when I talked to God, he said, I found out something very interesting. You know, that's why it pays to talk to God. Because sometimes we overthink a thing. Sometimes we overreact a situation. But Jeremiah said, when I talked to God, I discovered. I said, what did you find out, Jeremiah? He said, I discovered maybe the things are not as bad as they could have been. I, I got a cold right here. And that's why even in the midst of this COVID-19, when I see things 
that are changing day in and day out. I see people that are wearing masks everywhere they go. When I talk to God, God give me, he give me clarity. He tell me that things are not as bad as they could have been. So Jeremiah, he began to listen to God. And God began to give him some clarity. He tell Jeremiah that you could have been consumed. He tell Jeremiah that you could have been destroyed. And then he tells him that you could have been seeking to rise no more. Do you hear me? And but I talked to Jeremiah and Jeremiah said, and uh, look at here, Pastor Mabry, I've learned something very valuable. Uh -huh. And uh, I said, Jeremiah, can you tell me, son, what it was and uh, you learned when you were going through? And now, uh, Jeremiah said, and uh, I learned, Pastor Mabry, a three statement, a three statement of faith. Do you hear me? And uh, I said, what do you mean, Jeremiah? You learned a three statement of faith. Jeremiah said, and uh, I learned, number one, and uh, the Lord's love, it'll never end. Do you hear me? And uh, I learned number two, that uh, the Lord's mercy, uh, it will never stop. <laughs> and, uh, I learned, number three, uh, that great is uh, the Lord's faithfulness. Can I get a witness in here? And I'm clothing him now, but I thank God that just like Jeremiah, I've learned something about the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm learning, Deacon McKenzie, <laughs> that out of everything that uh, the Lord does in this life, uh, His love, uh, it'll never end. Uh, I learned through everything uh, that every day that uh, His mercy, uh, it'll never stop. Uh, I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning uh, that great is uh, the Lord faithfulness. Do you hear what I'm saying? And uh, that simply means that uh, even though uh, I'm not always faithful, uh, God is always uh, faithful to me. Can I get a witness in here? I know it don't sound uh, popular right now, uh, but when I look back uh, over my life, all I'm saying is I never would have made it without the Lord being on my side. I never would have made it if I had not had his mercy in my life. I never would have made it if God was not faithful to me. And some of you out there, you ought to thank God for being a faithful God. Because when I look back over my life, I realize that the only reason I'm still here, because His love, it never is. The only reason and uh, I'm still here uh, because his mercy uh, it never stops. Uh, the only reason uh, I'm still here uh, is because great is uh, his faithfulness. Uh, and if you know uh, that God is faithful, uh, you ought to high five Jesus and say, Lord, I thank you for being faithful. I don't know what next week will bring but whatever it brings his love will never end whatever happens 
in life, his mercy will never stop. Whatever happens in my life, great is my faithfulness. Can I get a witness in here? I got to close them now. I got to close them now. But over 2,000 years ago, if that was a year that started out of well, but it ended on a rugged crow. I don't know about you today, but I'm so glad that he died. Because when he died, it taught me three things. His love will never end. His mercy will never stop. And great is his faithfulness. He died because of love will never end. He will bear because his mercy will never stop. And now I can say, I never, I never, I never would have made it without you, Lord. I never could have made it without you, Lord. I'm stronger, I'm wiser, I'm better. Yeah. to see, begins to say, begins to pray. He begins to pray. I never would have made it. So I pray every day, Jeremiah, just like Jeremiah, Lord, whatever you do, keep me on your mind. Because if you keep me on your mind, I'll be able to make it. Yeah. Yeah. Now I understand what the old church said, the Lord don't help me. I can't stand the storm. In other words, they said, Lord, if you don't keep me on your mind, I will be able to make it through. But Jeremiah says, Bob and Sapp says in the song, I'm stronger, I'm wiser. Because when I look back over my life, I realize that when I could, it was you that I held on to. And I never would have made it, never could have made it without you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God bless you. We thank you today for tuning in live to the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. And for those of you out there that have just heard this message, you may be struggling. You may find yourself at a period in life where you just like Jeremiah, you feel like all hope is gone. Let me encourage you this morning by saying that when it's over your head, he still got it under his feet. But you got to take on the mindset of Peter and say, Lord, save me. And I come this morning to encourage you and let you know that whatever you're going through this morning, if you would just cry out, Lord, save me, he'll hear your cry. The old church said, just a little talk with Jesus will make things right. They say, he'll hear your faintest cry and 
he'll answer by and by. It all came out of having a little talk with Jesus. My prayer for you today is that if you don't know him, get to know him. My prayer is today, if you do know him, get to know more about him. My prayer today is, if you're not saved, get saved. My prayer today, if you are saved, get serious about your salvation. Jeremiah says, I've lost hope. Jeremiah says, not only is it messing with my physical, it's messing with my spiritual man as well. But he said, I never would have made it without you. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Had a guy tell me, surprise, you preach, you, getting, you, you get real deep. No, I don't get deep. I just believe in serving me. You got too much sugar gospel out there. And sugar ain't good for your teeth. They rot in the mouth. They fall out your mouth. Meat is a good nutrient. It can help you. And I'm just trying to help somebody during this time to hang on in there. Let me pray, Lord, I come today. I have decreased. God, you have increased. I planted water. But God, you got to make it grow. And God, I'm praying now that this message as it went forward has helped somebody and encouraged someone to hold on just a little while longer. God, I know the days look real dark, look real dim, get real discouraging. But God, help us to hold on to you in times like these. I pray now, God, you bless each one that heard this word, that will share this word. I ask you to strengthen them right now, God, in their time of weakness. I ask you to bless now these families that have lost loved ones. Young lady in Aberdeen, sister died, and now she's diagnosed. I ask a special blessing for them right now. God, I even ask you to touch right now in Illinois, Sister Jack and Mackenzie, in a special way. God, I know you to be a healer. I know you to be a deliverer. God, there are other members in our congregation that are dealing with different issues. Touch them right now, God. But God, help us keep our mind on you. God, we more importantly pray that our mind that we stay on your mind. Now, God, as we come down from this place, we ask you to continue to bless us. Continue, God, to encourage us. We ask it all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, we thank you for tuning in to the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. You can go watch this on YouTube later on our YouTube channel. Also, if you'd like to give to this ministry, you'd like to give to this ministry, uh, you can go to Givelify. Givelify app. Look for St. Paul, P-A-U-L, Parsons V-S, M-B Church. You'll see me standing there in a picture, a big old black suit on. And just continue to pray for me, and God will continue to keep my mind. God bless you, and God keep you is our prayer. I love you, I love you, I love you.